the screen visible. Welcome back to the session. So day four of our training, day four of data analytics using Microsoft Excel. Yesterday, we had looked at these functions, max ifs, min ifs, sum ifs, count ifs. And then we talked about error handling by using the if error and the if any functions. So what's the difference between the two? If any handles only the any errors. If error on the other hand handles all types of errors, including the not available or not applicable error, okay, any error. Now, we also talked about mixed referencing for one particular example, we used mixed referencing. And we had started talking about conditional formatting. Okay, we didn't cover all of the aspects of conditional formatting, but to some extent we did. So we will continue with conditional formatting today. Look at what all we can do and then get an introduction to the lookup functions. Okay. And tomorrow completely we will focus on the lookup functions. So with this agenda, let's get started. We were using this data yesterday. I was using this data to explain about the concept of conditional formatting. I'll give you a quick recap of whatever we had done yesterday, and then we will proceed further. Okay. So I'm doing this on a Windows machine today so that you all can see and understand how it is done on a Windows machine, because I think on a MacBook, a few features are not matching. Some of you had told yesterday. So here is our data that we were working with yesterday. So uh, as a quick recap, I'm going to take the data that is present in the profit target column, okay? Here I have selected the entire column by using control plus shift key plus the down arrow. So you click in the cell, hold down the control key plus shift plus down arrow, the whole column gets selected. Now I will go up to the styles group under the home ribbon the place where we can access conditional formatting from. Okay, when, I, when we click here, we will see certain options to perform conditional formatting. So I'll do a recap of what we had done with highlight cells. In this case, let's say I would like to highlight those cells having a value of greater than 100. So we'll go in here and select this greater than option. We'll be prompted to enter a value format cells that are greater than, and I'm going to give 100. Here we can choose what type of color, how we might want to format it. I will say greater than 100 should appear with a green fill with dark green text. Now you can notice how it has done, right? Excel has highlighted, it managed to highlight all the cells where the value is more than 100. Now I will again select this particular cell and apply another rule. The next rule or condition is, I would like to highlight the members with a profit of less than 50 and that in red color. So you can notice how it managed to, uh, managed to highlight it in red. I'll apply one more condition that I want to highlight the members whose profit, target profit is in between, okay? So I'm using the between option now. It's from 50 to 100. And such things I'm going to highlight in yellow color. The cells where the profit is in the range of 50 to 100 are supposed to be highlighted with yellow color. So this was what we had done yesterday. The last concept uh, that we discussed was this. The complete data that is present in this column is now having a, a color based on the value in that field, right? Green for more than 100, yellow for the values from 50 to 100, and less than um, 50 are in red color. So whatever I did just now is highlighting only the data that is present in that particular column. Now, what if we might want to highlight the entire row based on the condition? some condition that we define. 
if we would want to highlight the entire row, then what to do? So first I will clear out whatever formatting I have applied. How to clear it out? By going back to conditional formatting, we have, we have an option to clear the rules. Okay, these are called as rules. We are setting up a rule that when so-and-so condition is met, do something. If the condition is not met, then something else. So here we will go ahead and clear the rules. I'm going to clear the rules from the entire sheet. I don't want anything here. So I'll just completely clear everything. Now let's see how to highlight a complete row based on some criteria. So I will select the entire table, control shift right arrow and control shift down. So the whole data, the complete data in the table is now selected in the, in that range is selected. Okay. I'll go ahead and apply conditional formatting, but now I am going to create a rule. Okay. I'm going to create a rule and we'll have to use this option. Use the form, use the formula to determine which cells to format. Okay. And edit the rule description, format values where the formula is true. So what is the formula? The value in this particular cell or in that column actually, but I just select the cell. If it is greater than 100, we need the highlighting to happen. But if you notice here, the column and the row, both are logged in place. This is absolute referencing. In our case, we want only the column to be logged. The row should not be logged. We have to work with the data present in each and every row. So I will simply remove the dollar sign before the row number. This is mixed referencing. Now in this case where we define the row, any uh, default color format is in there. There is no default color format that we can select from. We will have to set up the format. Okay, by going to this format button, we can go ahead and choose the format. I will just use a fill. Let's say I want to fill it with this color. All right, so now I'm going to click on OK and OK again. And we should be able to see all the cells wherever the target profit was greater than 100. It's not just that particular cell, but the entire row corresponding to it got highlighted. Okay, how to highlight an entire row based on certain value is what we've seen. Yeah, direction more or less similar to what you do with the if functions, right? It should be greater than something or less than something, equal to something between certain range. Yeah, more or less the same. Okay, one more time this feature. Okay, um, the feature of enroll uh, highlighting the entire row. I think you're asking me to repeat, right? Okay, let's see that. Let me undo what I let me clear the formatting. So I will go slow now, please see. We actually, we did this yesterday. I'm just repeating what we had done yesterday. First, we have to select the complete range. Hold down the control key, shift key and the right arrow so that the cursor moves to the right and highlights the entire row. Now, control shift and down arrow so that the complete range of data is highlighted. Okay. After the whole thing is highlighted, now I'll go up to the styles group. This is called as the styles group and access the conditional formatting feature from here. Highlight cell rules. And this time I would like to define a rule. Okay, I'm not using greater than, less than. I'm going to define a rule. Greater than, less than you can use if you're working with one cell, one column. Here we are working with the entire data. We want the whole thing to be highlighted, isn't it? So we'll have to go here to more rules. Now, I would like to use a formula to determine which cells to format. I think this, even if I zoom in uh, this part, it, it will not work, okay? Use a formula to determine which cells to format is the one that I've selected here. You can see the blue ribbon behind it. Here we have to type in the formula. Okay, 
Now, what is our rule? We want the data in column G over here. We want the data present over here to be greater than 100. And only for such records where the target profit is greater than 100, we would like to highlight the entire row. And I'm going to use mixed referencing to not lock the, colors, the row. Okay, so this is dollar G2. Dollar G means the column is locked, G column, but the row is not locked. Okay, and I'm using a different format, a color to highlight the cells. Okay, so I hope you got it this time. This is how we can um, ensure that the entire row meeting the criteria is highlighted. Okay. All right. So if I just use, let's say, K2 or K, suppose what, what is the address of the cell? It is K3. If I move down, it would become K4. If I move here, it would become L4. That every cell has an address, isn't it? So this is called relative referencing, K3, K4, K5, it moves. But here we wanted mixed referencing, fixing the column, changing the row alone. All right. Now let's proceed further and look at some more options that we have under conditional formatting. So I'm going to clear away all the rules that I applied. I'll just clear everything. So we had discussed about top and bottom also yesterday. Okay, so highlight cells and top and bottom is done. Now let's proceed to the next set. These are a more graphical or a more visual way of representing the data. Okay, we can highlight the values basically by indicating data bars. The first thing is data bar. And I will first select the column with which I would like to work. This is the column that I want to work with. Now I'll go to data bars. We can indicate the values by giving bars, by placing bars. So it's a nice visual way of representing the data. There are different colors to choose from, as you can see. We also have solid fill. Okay, this is a gradient fill and this is a solid fill. I'll go ahead with gradient fill and I will use, let's say blue color, this one. Now let's understand how to, under, uh, how to interpret these bars. You can notice bars have come, but what are they indicating? They are indicating the performance or the target profit relative to each other. See, if you notice, the highest profit I think is 370, which you can see the length of the bar is the longest here. And relative to the highest value, the rest of the bars have been given a size. Okay, the rest of the bars are in proportion or in relation to or relative to the highest value. This is 360. This is 260. This is 220. This is 30. Getting it? We are indicating the value, not just the value, but in the form of a bar. Now, um, I'll do one thing. I'll make it slightly wider. All these three, I would like to increase the width of all the three columns. So by going to the column number, when we, uh, you know, select the columns, and go to this format option. This is to format the width of the cell or the height of the cell. So this is the cells group. I'll go in here and change the column width. I'm going to fix the column width as 15 pixels. Okay, 15. I think 15 is small. Um, let me make it 25. Okay, this is better. Okay, this is better. Now, it is also possible to hide these numbers. Let's say I want to indicate the data only with the bar. Numbers need not be displayed or for some reason I would like to hide the numbers. Then what to do? Select the entire column. Okay. Now I will go back to my conditional formatting and I'm going to manage the rules. Whatever rules that we set up, on the sheet and on, on a particular cell or a column, everything can be uh, seen or accessed from this manage rules option. So when I go to manage rules here, this is a rule, 
right? What did we put? Data bar. Okay, on this particular column and that row, we have put a data bar. Now I would like to edit this row. So here's an option to edit the row. First, I'll have to select the rule. You can see it has been highlighted. And now I'll click on edit rule button. Once this is done, you see here, we are representing our uh, uh, visualization through a data bar. The format style is a data bar. And there is one checkbox next to it, show bar only. So if I select this checkbox to show bar only, it is going to remove the values. Okay, once I apply on okay, it's not going to show me the data. It will only show me the bars. Look at that. So how would this help us? What can we figure out by looking at only the bars? We wouldn't know anything much, right? Imagine a scenario where you're uh, giving a presentation. Uh, you're from the finance department and you're giving a report. Let's say a report uh, where you're indicating the salaries of employees. Okay, you're showcasing the salaries of employees, but you're not supposed to reveal the salaries. You just have to show a relative comparison. Okay, so with respect to the highest salary that is being paid to an employee, what is the salary that the rest of the employees are getting? I hope you are getting my point. So places where you might want to hide the figures, the numbers, the values, because you don't want to, you don't want people to know what is the salary. You simply want to know relatively where do they stand. Okay, so in that case, you can simply create this kind of visualization where we are not showing the numbers, but the bars are going to convey the information. The point you need to remember here is this is relative comparison. This is relative comparison, okay? Means this is slightly higher than this member. This member is significantly higher than this member. This member is much, much low compared to this member. Okay, so relative. Exactly, while we are showcasing confidential data, it is better we can, if we go ahead and hide the numbers, but we can show still show the performance by using bars. Okay, so that was about data bars.